Good afternoon from Universal Orlando. Boy, have we got some exciting news to share with you guys today. In a construction update, we got the name of the new Harry Potter roller coaster. It's going to be Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, and it opens June 13th. And we've got a lot of other construction going on around the park. So let's head in and check it out. The first thing that we come across is this How to Train Your Dragon kiosk here in CityWalk. Lots and lots of How to Train Your Dragon merch. Whoa, lots of Playmobil stuff. This is actually really neat. It's like a cauldron. What do you do with it? Do you put the people inside the cauldron? Why? The other thing in City Walk that we still have no idea what's going on is the old emeralds. I don't know what it's gonna be or what they're doing with it, but they are hard at work changing it out. We can see the sign's gonna be over here. Still looks like they're very much under construction in there. They just got studs up. No drywall, no nothing. So it'll be a little while before we learn anything about this particular location. So although we're not doing any Mardi Gras stuff today, I did wanna check into Voodoo Donuts and see if they have the beignet donut back yet or not. I don't see it in the display case, but I'll go up and ask them about it. They said they're still waiting on the sprinkles. So if you guys come out here and you go to Voodoo Donuts and you see the beignet donut, let me know. Now I know that this isn't where the Harry Potter roller coaster is or where a lot of construction is going on but I wanted to start here because this part closes first and even though it's a weekday they still are doing the Mardi Gras parade so if we get here towards the end of the night we'll get stuck behind a parade and we don't want that so we're heading in right now as soon as we walk in just past the studio suites is this dining reservations little kiosk where you make your reservations for the Bayou boil I had no idea that you would do that here. So as far as construction updates go, we're gonna start here at the Today Show Cafe, the rumored Today Show Cafe. We don't have official confirmation on that yet. And I'm gonna call it the Today Show Cafe because last time I called it the Boulangerie and I pronounced it wrong. I wanted to show you guys the souvenir cup is also new. So this is one of the Coke Freestyle cups now. You can barely even see the RFID in the bottom of it. It's pretty nice. Not as exciting and it doesn't have a, a handle like the other one does. Oh, the same design is available here at this epic adventure start at Universal. And it has all of the different stuff that was on that cup that we just looked at. And they have like, this is not a Coke Freestyle cup, but it has the same design on it. That it's a stainless steel tumbler that will keep your drinks hot or cold. I should probably be saying prices. $25 for this shirt, $25 for the hot and cold tumbler. How much is the mug with the same design? $20 on it. It's a pretty big mug too. I kind of like this hat a lot. If I wore hats, I think that I would do this one. It's $27. Pretty cool looking. This was a little bit confusing. So $8.99 is the cost to get the drinks during the day, but the actual cup costs $16. But once you have the cup, you only have to pay $8.99 per day. So like you buy a cup today, you pay $16 plus $8.99, I think. Th that might come with one free refill to start with. Not 100% sure. But the next day that you come, you only pay $8.99 and you can fill it up as many times as you want. And they have a lot of stuff with that design on it. Here's a puzzle. How much is the puzzle? $22 for a little 500 piece puzzle. Wow. That's kind of a good sign. Despicable Me Minion Mayhem is only a 40 minute wait today. Not too bad. And because of course it is Mardi Gras, all of the Mardi Gras characters are out and about getting ready for the parade, pumping people up, happy Mardi Gras, handing out beads and everything. One thing that I'm not sure if I explained correctly is that there are live concerts during Mardi Gras, but they're not every day. They're usually just on the weekends. So what is NF? Who's that? And because it's not a concert night, there are no barriers set up. So there's just people kind of lounging out here in Music Plaza, trying to catch some shade and taking a nice soft spot in the grass. They're setting up the little areas for handicapped and differently abled people to come and be able to see the parade. If you come in and need guest assistance to have a good spot to watch the parade, this is where you'll watch it from. Back to They're doing like, six. name that tune. I got this. Sorry. A one, two, three, do, 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 uh, all the single ladies? Put a ring on it. That's what it is. So on my way around, I stopped into the film vault because this is where they're handing out the annual pass holder buttons for this time of year. And it's a Mardi Gras one. I like it. I like the little alligator with his beads and his crown. Pretty neat. Over here in front of La Bamba, 
I wanted to point out that something that I don't think I've showed you guys before. There's an entire kiosk devoted to Funko. So you can come in here and get all kinds of different Funko Pops. This Mary Jane is awesome. Oh, and you can get the Dorbs as well. What else do they have? Oh, Bruce Banner, look, he's like turning green. That's really neat. Some really neat Funko Pops over here. Oh, Miles Morales. They even have these gold ones down here. I don't know if these are hard to find, but if they are, this is where they're at. I believe I was wrong about the Mimosa and Wine Villa because this area is open now and I can see literal bottles of wine out here. Let's find out. Here's the menu for the Mimosa and Wine Bar. It sounds very interesting. They have some examples of them up here. They're kind of neat looking. So I asked in there and he said that all the mimosas were the same price. The wine varies by what kind of wine you get. But if you get a mimosa, it is all $11.72 and that is including tax. The How to Train Your Dragon experience here has kind of a short line. So I think I'm going to get in line and see what it really is all about. Just looking over by SpongeBob store pants and noticed that Doc Brown's out there. Yeah, we're up next. Oh, ooh, we get to get on Toothless. This is exciting. Well, that was kind of fun. It was interesting. I'm excited to see what the video looked like. So it turned out you get in there, you get on Toothless, you're on a green screen, and you're looking at a screen, and you're kind of going through what's happening, and they tell you to react to certain things that are like point behind you. So we'll see what it looks like. Wow. It's a hidden dragon world. We have to fight for their freedom. They're trying to recruit people to go on the floats over here. Oh, just kidding. Maybe they're not recruiting people. This is where they're having people wait to go on the floats. They used to be back there by Barney, but now it's over here in Central Park, which seems kind of strange because it seems hotter over here. I don't know. Maybe they'll have something like some shade where they can let people sit. Oh, this is kind of interesting. It's only Sideshow Bob meeting, nobody else. Wonder why. Huh, so somebody tweeted at me and said, Tim, you should go check over by Men in Black because I heard that they have a Horror Nights tent that they've already started setting up. And I said, there's no way. It's just the beginning of the year. And now that I'm over here, I just wonder if they left the tent up because that's possible as well. Because there it is. That was a Horror Nights house last year, so there's a tent back there. I'm not sure if it just showed up or if it's just been up since October. One of the few spots in the park that isn't playing Mardi Gras music is here on the London waterfront, right outside of Diagon Alley. I don't know why Pier 41 is behind Scrim, but it is. I don't know what they're doing. Probably just refurbishing the outside. I do feel bad though because there are bats. No, maybe the bats live in this roof. One of these roofs has a lot of bats that come flying out of it at night as well as those yellow towers up there over top of Men in Black, full of bats. It's pretty interesting. If you're over here at dusk, look out for bats in this area. The beat builders are out here doing some jamming. It's kind of interesting to watch them from back here. All right, now it's time to head over to the main attraction Heading over to Islands of Adventure, getting a look at some of the new construction that's going on over there, including Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. I'm just gonna call it Hagrid's from now on. There's like a stilt walker line dance going on over here. Looks like there's some sort of dance competition that's gonna be happening here at Hard Rock Live. Uh, right next to the Hard Rock Cafe. Here we go, into Islands of Adventure. The adventure begins where we're looking for roller coasters. So the first spot we're gonna stop is down here by the water, looking all the way across at the Jurassic Park Discovery Center, because as we all know, they are doing some construction over there on a rumored roller coaster. And it looks like they've gotten a lot of land clearing done. We're gonna head around a few other places in the park and see if we can get a couple of closer views of this. Oh, they cleared a lot of land out. But of course, I wanted to get a little bit closer look as the people on the Hulk roller coaster come screaming by. As we head into Superhero Island, one thing that somebody told me to come and check out was Doctor Doom's Fearfall because they changed the harness on it. So 
So I'm excited to see like what that's all about. Plus I haven't rid Dr. Dooms in a long time. It says it's a 20 minute wait. I wonder if they have a single rider line. I feel like this single rider entry is a little bit confusing because the enter is here. Single riders is up this set of stairs over here. Single rider. So the new harnesses don't have a seatbelt right in here. It's like there used to be a seatbelt that you would connect in the center there. Not there anymore. There's a little tribute here. It says, all hail Dr. Doom. I wonder if that's the guy that drew Dr. Doom or the guy that came up with Dr. Doom. Next spot where we're gonna go to have a look at the construction work that's going on over by Jurassic Park. It's actually down here by Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. And we're down here by the ship Olive and we're actually gonna go out here, out back, and then we're gonna go up into the ship and have a look around. But I think that this will be a really close view of the Jurassic Park stuff. I've never seen this large bird's nest down here. I wonder what that theming is for. Is there a large bird in Popeye? Oh, I found Popeye's buried treasure out here. There it is, X marks the spot. I like this too, this is Plymouth Rock. And if you look at it from the side, it looks like a car. Oh, oh yeah, we can definitely get pretty darn close to the action down here. I feel like uh, this is gonna be the best spot to set up and look on the construction. Whoa, they took down all kinds of awnings and everything back there. Didn't there used to be coverings on top of some of these posts on the back of the Jurassic Park Discovery Center? Or am I just imagining things? Also, it seems like nobody can be up on that back patio. So this probably is the only spot that we can have a look. We'll go over to the Discovery Center and see if we can get out on that back patio. I don't think we'll be able to. Right now, it's just a lot of grading work. They've gotten rid of all of the steps and walkways and planters and plants. Now it's just dirt back there and a seawall. Oh, there's a little school of fish down here. That's fun. I feel like I've never been down to this section of the park before. It's very quiet down here. Well, I mean, maybe not so quiet. It's very secluded. Still a lot of like random noises happening all over the place from the rides and from the speakers that are down here, just random noises coming from over there somewhere. But it's pretty nice down here by the water and we get a really good view. Oh, it's not a seawall. It's just like a silt fence. I thought it was a seawall. Man, they've got a lot of work to do over there as far as grading, construction, concrete, pilings, and footings. Lots of stuff. This is just the beginning, it looks like. This is absolutely the most secluded spot I've ever been to in the park. Look at this. It's a fairly crowded day in the parks, and there's nobody back here. Nobody even close to being back here. It is pretty loud because of the ride and the water and everything, but other than that, nobody. There we go, we can see some people going by just getting soaked. It looks like Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls is under refurbishment right now. They got a construction wall up. The construction walls are all over the place. We can't even look in and see what they're doing, which is strange because they're still running boats down the drop. Pretty big wait time for Kong at 55 minutes. So the last time we were here, Jurassic Park was under refurbishment. Now Dudley Do-Right's is under refurbishment and Jurassic Park River Adventure is back open. There's nobody on that boat. They all got eaten by dinosaurs. I wonder why that boat was empty because it's a 45 minute wait right now. As we saw before, still lots and lots of construction walls all through here. Oh, there's a big T-Rex right there. You know, just looking at construction. Oh no, man. That face when you step on a puddle of water in a sock. This is definitely Jurassic World, right? Because there's blue. She's there. What are these? Little baby dinosaurs? They're little babies. More little babies. 
with some sharp teeth. We're kind of back behind the T-Rex. I'm gonna call it a meet and greet, even though you're not meeting and greeting the T-Rex, the photo op. Right next to the uh, raptor encounter, and you can kind of see that the trees back there look very thin. So now we're gonna head into the Discovery Center and see how far back we can get inside of it. Well, there it is. They've put a trash can in front of the doors, so you can't get out there, but we can still look out the windows and get a pretty good view of the construction site. Nothing really going on out there as of right now. This little earth mover was just moving around a second ago, but other than that, nothing. Although this vantage point is air conditioned and inside, it's nice. You don't really get to see as much though, like from where I was down by the olive oil. That was a really good view. So I think that's where we're gonna go from now on. And now we head into the main event, Hagrid's Coaster. Also, they've taken down all of the cranes in there, so there's nothing sticking up over top of the Hogsmeade sign. Oh, they've pushed the construction wall out here at the entrance to Hagrid's Roller Coaster. That means they're probably gonna be putting up a sign soon. You guys were calling that the boathouse. It looks amazing. So far along, so well themed. I cannot wait until this ride opens. They're still doing some work on the main building back there, but it's like they're very far along. So now that we know the theme of this roller coaster, it's gonna be you're on a motorbike like Hagrid's, riding through different show scenes. What building do you guys think this is? Is it gonna be Hagrid's hut? Or is it gonna be something else? It does look pretty darn cool with the sun in the background as it is. Oh yeah, there's zero chance of us seeing anything this time of day. Wow. At least we can kind of get an outline of it right there. But that's about it. Kind of get a little view of the track in there with the sun shining off of it. Other than that, not much has changed since the last time we were here. Maybe just a little bit more theme painting. We're still working on the building back there in the back. Oh, it's like a tower back there. That's interesting. I wonder what tower that is. This is gonna be good. I think that this is gonna be probably one of the best roller coasters in Florida when it opens. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I really enjoy the detail of the flying buttresses back there. From way back here, this is the best view of the track and the building there that it goes through that we can see. I'm pretty excited for how that track turns. Look, it almost turns vertically or horizontally. Almost takes a 90 degree turn. I don't know what, Banks at 90 degrees? Oh no, it was Tristan's birthday and he nobody knows because he lost his pin. Ah, the sun, the sun went behind the clouds for a minute so we can get a better view of that tower back there and a better view of this building and these architectural designs and that track. Look at that. I can't wait for this to, oh, sun's coming back out. I think we're losing it. I can't wait for this to open. I know I say this every time, but since they released the name and the date, I'm real excited. I wanted to point out something. Right there is a piece of track that just goes straight up and the ride vehicle will go up that stop and then drop backwards into a different scene. That's exciting. We got one more stop to make back down behind Mythos. We can get down near the water and maybe see some of that Jurassic Park construction down here. So it seems like mostly anywhere that we go, we're gonna be able to see this Jurassic Park construction because everywhere has a good view of it. When we were over by the olive oil, you can see the ship right here. We were kind of right at the point there so I don't know what's closer, that or this. I think that might be, but this is still pretty darn good. But like we said over at the other side, still nothing going on. You can't see anything other than just dirt and dumpsters. I feel like the speakers are just louder over here. It is nice to be able to view the entire park. One thing I really love about Islands Adventure is that it's all built around this lagoon here. So anywhere you stand, you can get a view across the lagoon at something else and it looks beautiful, especially towards sunset because the sun's setting back behind us and we're still like maybe an hour away from that. But once it gets down a little bit further, this all will turn pink and purple and Hulk will be lit in the background and it'll be beautiful. I stopped into the gift shop here on the way out and I always thought it was interesting how many different lanyards Universal has. The other question is, can anybody just buy one of these annual pass holder ones or do you have to be an annual pass holder to get it? Ooh. This classic monsters one is neat. I think these are all just $10. But look at them, there's so many different lanyards. So there you have it, that was our trip out to Universal Studios and Islands Adventure. Check up on some construction that's going on. Get real excited, I mean really excited for Hagrid's magical creatures motorbike adventure. I think that's it, like I said, we're just gonna stick with Hagrid's because it's kind of a long name and kind of hard to remember. So Hagrid's motorbike adventure, 
it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun. So, with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Here's the penis, and now it's time to pay the price.